Has vegan chicken finally reached 100% realism? I think it has. So I wanted to test my theory. I didn't want to fool people into eating fake chicken. I don't think that's right. So after watching an episode of Seinfeld where George was trying to prove who stole his Twix, I came up with an idea. I'm gonna do the same test. I'm gonna let people know that they're doing a taste test between vegan chicken and real chicken. Except there's no real chicken. The funniest thing was nobody was questioning Monica grabbing chicken from these buckets. That still cracks me up. So in this test, we're gonna find out two things. Which vegan chicken nugget tastes more like chicken? And two, do any chicken nuggets taste close enough to real chicken to where people would be confused and think they're actually eating chicken? So let's get going. I think this is gonna be a really awesome test. But if we're gonna be testing a bunch of chicken nuggets with a bunch of people, then we're gonna need a lot of dipping sauces. Let's make some. So our first step is to make the special sauce. All chicken restaurants have their own special sauce and they're all pretty similar. So let's get started. First, we're gonna need about two cups of vegan mayo. About a cup of ketchup, quarter cup soy sauce, some dehydrated minced onions. All cooking channels flip their hand that way and I just don't understand it. We're gonna use some agave instead of sugar and then I'm gonna punch it up with some Dijon mustard, some pickle juice, black pepper, smoked paprika. I mean, just look at it. That's the perfect special sauce. I mean, it's special, isn't it? Let's give it a taste and see. Did we get the magic right? And I believe, yeah, that's pretty good. That's actually better than I better than I thought. It's gonna be awesome. Once this sits in the fridge for a few hours, all those flavors are gonna mingle up and party. And uh, yeah, it's gonna create a seriously special sauce. So for the next sauce, let's make a vegan honey mustard. Now, vegan honey mustard's pretty easy. You can't have honey, so you can use agave. Uh, agave works pretty well, but it is just kind of like a mild sweetener. So we are gonna add some other floral elements to it to give it that uh, honey taste. So we're gonna be using as much mustard as you have. Uh, if you don't have enough like me, uh, you can add some vinegar to it. Now you can use a white vinegar, but I'm using an apple cider vinegar here because I think that's going to help add those little floral notes to this to make the honey mustard section feel a little bit more like honey mustard. So just add your agave and then I'm gonna be adding just a touch, just the tiniest little touch of some barbecue sauce. So let's give it a mix, then give it a taste and see, do we have that sweetness right? Uh, no, we don't. So let's go ahead and just add a touch more agave and try it again. This one should be it and it is perfect. So in the fridge you go and onto our third sauce, our ranch sauce. Now for our ranch sauce, it's gonna be incredibly complicated. We're just gonna be using this. I had so much to do, I didn't have time to make a vegan ranch, so here it is. Speaking about not having time, I needed to take a break on my brand new outdoor sofa from Outer. Today's sponsor. Outer creates durable and eco-conscious furniture designed to help people live better outside. They completely reimagined the outdoor living experience from the ground up. Their all-weather wicker frame is made from recycled plastic bottles. They plant loads of trees to fight deforestation, they're climate neutral certified, and every product is fully recyclable. I love that. And outer is made from the best materials. Their patented outer shell fabric is UV protected and stain resistant, so it keeps things looking brand new for up to 10 years. That's wild. Plus, it's extremely comfortable too. I mean, this is the most comfortable outdoor furniture I have ever sat on. No joke. And Outer is a 1% for the Planet member, which means they give 1% of their annual revenue to environmental nonprofits. And if you are looking to live better outside, look no further than Outer. It's like we've added a whole new room to our house. So don't wait. Get $200 off plus free shipping by heading over to go.liveouter.com slash sauce stash. That's go.liveouter.com slash sauce stash. They do sell out fast, so click the link. Thanks, Outer, for sponsoring today's video and for making such comfy outdoor furniture I can feel good about. And I'm excited to have my friends over over to check it out. So to complete this test, we have a lot of vegan chicken. I bought pretty much all of the main brands that I can find. I went to a bunch of grocery stores around Orlando, ran around, picked out every vegan chicken that they had that looked feasible and uh, ran with it. So here we go. We're starting with Jack and Annie's jackfruit chicken. Originally, I was going to make my own jackfruit chicken, but I realized with the size and scope of this video that I didn't have time to do that. So I needed to find a jackfruit chicken. So here we go. Number two on the list and number one in most people's hearts, the impossible chicken nugget. I personally think these are pretty good, but we'll see what everybody else thinks about them. Now for number three, I have not tried yet the raised and rooted plant-based nugget. I accidentally bought the regular and the spicy, but we'll see if that makes a difference because we're going to be pulling the breading off anyways. Now one of my favorite, I love the taste and texture, the Beyond Nuggets. I think these are really, really good. Coming up next, I've been calling them Incognito, but they're actually Incognito. I love the name. I haven't tried these ones yet. We'll see what everybody thinks. Now for number six, it's our first Guardian, the Ultimate Chicken Tenders. I have not tried these ones yet either. There's quite a few on the list that I haven't tried, but I'm excited about them. For number seven is the Old School Guardian. 
Guardian Crispy Tenders, and I'll tell you these things are really good, and that's why I added them to the list. Now, for number eight, we're going to be trying something new as well, the Light Life Chicken Breast. I mean, these looked pretty good. I'm going to kind of cut them into little chunks and use them as nuggets. I think they're going to fare pretty good. Now, for the last one, number nine is the one that I'm the stoked the most about, the Meaty Cutlet. Uh, I've been following these guys for a little while. They finally released a product. It is grown from mushroom mycelium. These are the most realistic vegan chicken breasts that I have came across, and I cannot wait to bread them up and feed them to my crew and see what they think. Speaking of breading, I wanted to make sure that these all had the same breading on them. So that way nobody was picking which nugget they liked better versus which one they thought was the most chicken-like. I still don't know what breading I'm gonna use, but I do know that I need to remove the breading and I have a ton of nuggets to do this on. So I brought my friend in, Clean Cooking with Caitlin. Uh, she's gonna help me remove all of the breading on these and we just needed to get started. We started peeling the breading off. I had these all thawed. I figured that would be the easiest way to do it. We quickly realized that just picking the breading off was gonna take way too long. So I grabbed some butter knives and we started scraping. That didn't really work for me. So eventually I just grabbed like a regular, my just regular chef's knife and just kind of started cutting the breading off. Either way, we ended up with some nuggets and it started to work out, but this was an all day long process. Eventually even we needed more help because this was taking way longer. The party was in a few hours. I still don't know what breading I'm gonna do. And we're only halfway through debreading. We brought Monica in to help us out. She got done with work. She's dressed all cute for the party, but so let's just throw an apron on and let's get debreading. So at this point, all of the breaded chicken is unbreaded. We have stacks of it. Now we're moving on to the breast. Now here's the light life breast. And I'll be honest, I was really surprised. These things were thawed out, but they were firm. They actually felt kind of like rubber, which is a little weird to me. Before they were cooked, they had like no natural chicken texture. Very weird, very unique, I'll be honest. So all I did at this point was just cut them into kind of like small nugget chunks that we could bread. Now we're on to the meaty. Now this is the one that I'm most excited about. I haven't opened one of these up yet. I know I keep saying it because they just, they just seem so cool to me, you know, like mushroom mycelium meat, just, it feels like the future, but we'll find out. So the same thing, I cut these open and I was immediately shocked. I mean, you could just see, and they were actually a lot more tender than I expected. They're kind of falling apart. They do have kind of a chicken smell, but then there's also like a unique, almost tuna smell that's happening with these. It's a little, it's throwing me off a little bit. The texture though was mind blowing, mind blowing. It was a little too soft to be like real chicken, but it is raw, so we'll find out. So the deep breading is done, the chicken is put away. We have three hours until the party. Now I need to figure out what is the best breading that's going to please and help fool all meat eaters. To help me with that, I brought in my buddy JP from Healthy Junk Food, the king of fast food, to help me figure out what breading I needed to do for this chicken. KFC, obviously. Thanks for the enthusiasm, JP. Let's make some KFC. So I've made KFC's 11 herbs and spices in the past, but JP knows how to throw a party. So we're gonna follow his recipe and just let him hand me the ingredients. I'm pretty sure uh, there's no measurements involved here. We're gonna start with about a bag of flour and a ton of salt. I really hope JP washed his hands. I mean, where's my peers at? Now we just need some thyme, basil, dried oregano, celery salt, ground black pepper, ground yellow mustard, paprika, lots of paprika, even more paprika. I was finally convinced just to use all of the paprika. Garlic salt, ground ginger, ground white pepper. M -M -S -S -G. Mix it up and then we kind of realized that, you know, KFC has like visible pepper chunks in it. You can see the black pepper. So we just decided to add some more ground black pepper and I'm talking a lot more for this amount of the mixture here. I mean, eventually my hand got tired and JP had to take over. <laughs> now at this point, this is starting to look like the KFC batter. So to make an authentic KFC batter, you need some buttermilk. So I pulled out my plant-based milk mix to make some buttermilk. We're gonna start off with one cup of cashews and three cups of cold water. Now, if you're using a blender, you're just gonna blend it up and then strain that mixture through some like milk cloth or, you know, nut milk cloth, something like that. That's gonna be all you need. Now, to give it that buttermilk taste, we're gonna add a little bit of lactic acid, not much, just a little bit. That's gonna make it tart. You can use some like lemon juice that will also help. And then I'm gonna use some white vinegar. I have a rice vinegar here. That's gonna be perfect for this. Just mix it up and our buttermilk is done. Now, KFC batters their chicken in a combination of buttermilk and a little bit of egg. So I'm gonna be adding some just egg, the whole container. <laughs> so let's bring the flour back in and start battering. There's a little discussion on the best method of doing this, but I figured might as well just dump it all in the buttermilk. And then, you know, just because there's so much of it, I was gonna use some chopsticks and try to 
transfer it back and forth. That quickly didn't work. And then we also realized with this much chicken that needed to be breaded, that this breading in the bowl was gonna start getting kind of clumpy. So we need to come up with another way. I bought some buckets for the end product, like the testing section. So we're gonna use some of these buckets to help bread it. We're just gonna toss a little bit of the flour in the bottom, throw the chicken on the top, and then kind of shake it around. JP had that idea because he normally uses like a paper bag. I guess that's something that they do in a lot of like restaurants. I didn't have any paper bags, so the buckets ended up working. Now we're about an hour away from the party. Time is getting tight. We're gonna bring the crew back in to start breading this chicken. Uh, it, it, we need to get moving. Now I'm gonna deep fry these in a vegetable oil and peanut oil combination, and I need a big fryer for that. So I borrowed my buddy Joe's fryer. He has a big deep fryer. He brought it over, got that fryer hot. Here he is right here. Hi, Joe. He's gonna help us fry these up. There's a ton of batches of chicken to go. So let's start frying about three minutes each. That's all these need. They are looking really epic. People are starting to show up. This is starting to happen. We're gonna find out what is the most realistic vegan chicken ever. No one knows the trick. Again, remember is everybody thinks a few of these buckets are real chicken. Now I wanted the way to be able to measure the results of this test to see which one actually tasted more like chicken. So I made a really quick Google form and I set up a little QR code so all of my guests could scan the code and then they could enter in the form which one they thought was real chicken. But just like always happens when you're in a hurry, I messed up. There's eight on the sheet, right? but we actually did nine buckets. I made the sheet before I chose the ninth chicken. And that's okay. It's only gonna affect that last chicken. I'm a little disappointed, but I couldn't change anything at that moment. So I wanna see how confident everybody is if they think they can guess the right chicken. But we also had JP running around telling everybody that he brought real chicken to kind of like throw everybody off the scent. So what's going on is I brought real chicken to the party and Mark made what, like seven different versions of not real chicken. Thanks JP for playing along. Now the buckets are out. Caitlin's running around asking everybody what they think. Do you think you're gonna be able to tell the difference between the chicken and the chicken? I think so. Who knows? Who knows? It's amazing. <laughs> Probably not because I do like to eat a lot of vegan stuff, so I'm not, I don't have that chicken palate perfectly, you know. I give myself zero percent chance of knowing the difference. No. Yeah, well, he's honest. No. I will do my best. As we'll long see. as it's breaded and fried, I'll be happy. Yeah, you might surprise us. Yeah. We'll see. So we got a great mix. Some people are really confident, some people have no idea. I think this is a really good test. I'm going with number seven is chicken. Mostly two, but I thought one or two, but all of them were pretty good, most of them. Which ones are you voting for currently? Five and six. Or I think two is still in the lead. Five and six are the close. Two, six, and seven was pretty much the votes from everyone. Number two got most of the votes. I'd say 50% of the votes went to number two as far as being actual chicken. The rest of them were weighted as far as chick un. Number two is impossible chicken. Number six and seven are both our Gardein chickens. And you could see six and seven were weighted throughout the middle. People were confused. Was this one chicken or not? They just didn't know. Five. None of them were real chickens. No one really knew it, but you know what? Everybody had a lot of fun with this one. It was really exciting to see how this came out, and it felt like everybody was pretty shocked when they found out that none of them were real chicken. As far as media is concerned, I wish I would have added that to the list so we'd have gotten an accurate readout of exactly how people felt about it, but just from talking to everybody here, it seemed like everybody felt like it was really great. There was just something off with the taste that made them select number two, which was impossible.